is information a, a particle in, in the sense that it's like matter? Is information akin to being like electrons, protons, quarks, a antimatter? Is it some sort of parallel phenomenon that goes along with the reality? Or is it something fundamentally different? No, actually, I think it's about time that we start to disagree with each other. <laughs> And, um, no. So I want to. <laughs> no, you think so? Yeah. Um, Starting to get good. Because I want to bring in a notion which hasn't been put forward yet the question of dynamics. You know, when I first saw people windsurfing, I loved to also to go windsurfing. So on one day I thought, I'm a theoretical physicist, I can work out how to stand on the board, and how to hold the <laughs> sail without falling over. And I worked it all out, and I stood on the board, I could hand the sail, and I didn't fall over, and I, I went any direction I want. Except I only solved the static problem. I didn't solve the problem, what happens if a big wave comes? <laughs> and what, what, what do you have to do if you want to make a sudden turn? This I never solved, so whenever that happens, I fall over. Now here the problem is the same. So far we've been discussing this static question. What is information, where is it, and so on. And you can discuss it at length. But there's something else in physics, the dynamical question. How do things evolve in time? And how do we phrase laws of nature? And now we encounter a deep and fundamental problem, which is the world looks to us three-dimensional. If I make a disturbance here, like I'm saying something or I'm shining a light, the disturbance moves with the speed of light or slower to its environment. And it never goes faster than the speed of light from here to a point far away in the universe. That is a fundamental three-dimensional property of the world as we know. And it has been tested very, very accurately in all branches of physics. It's a very fundamental principle. Not only that disturbances move with a certain maximum speed, it also has causality. That is, whenever you cause some disturbance somewhere, its effect never goes faster than the speed of light, and it certainly doesn't go back in time. Now, this principle we would like to keep, and now holography is standing in our way. It's not doing the thing we want. If my friend Lenny here is right, and information on the three-dimensional, on the two-dimensional surface is completely scrambled, how do you explain it? If you make a disturbance here, the disturbance doesn't spread faster than the speed of light. How would Leah, when she moves her arms uh, in the hologram, how come that the disturbances don't move faster than a given speed in this hologram? There's still something basically wrong with the idea. And that Why would they have to move faster than the speed of light to, uh, to work? That's relativity theory, and relativity theory works extremely well. We don't want to give that up too easily as a fundamental principle. After all, relativity was also a principle that went into Steve Hawking's derivation. If you throw that away, you throw, you're throwing away black holes as well. So life isn't that easy. There's a problem here. So how do we address that? And then, I'm coming back to quantum mechanics, we say, well, we used quantum mechanics from the beginning until the end. There's something not quite right about quantum mechanics. And I've been thinking a lot, last decades basically, about there must be something underneath quantum mechanics, some more basic mechanical system that explains why the world that we encounter today looks like quantum mechanical. That could solve this problem, because it could be that in a pre-quantum world, the world is three-dimensional. Information gets lost all the time. In fact, a suspicion I have, and I'm practically the only one in the universe today <laughs> that has a suspicion that there's an underlying theory in which information gets lost to such an extent that if you have a bulk of material somewhere, so much information gets lost that the only thing that you can retain is what sits on the surface. And that is the reason why information-wise you have such a thing as a holographic principle. The only amount of information that you can keep if you have a bucket of water is what sits on the edge of the bucket of water. What happens inside will eventually get lost. Not according to quantum theory, because you just realize all quantum theory preserves information. 
but there may be a pre-quantum theory in which this information gets lost. Now, this is, pre -quantum let me just say, theory could be three-dimensional, and then we might possibly find a resolution of this problem. So is, is pre-quantum theory something that happened before the Big Bang, or is pre-quantum no, theory something I mean, that happens before you learn, pre -quantum like... Pre-quantum uh, in the logical sense. It geometry. is that there is something, that some fundamental principle lying underneath ah, so the, the principle of quantum mechanics. I see. Saying we have molecules, we have atoms, we have things smaller than atoms, but smaller than that are things which might not be quantum mechanical. That is my premature explanation as to how to reconcile the idea that the three-dimensional world seems to be two-dimensional by holographic principle, yet there is causality in the three-dimensional sense. This is a problem that has not yet been properly addressed, and I think something should be done about this.